Well, welcome to this brand new series that we've entitled Experience a Better Story. I don't know about you, but as a child, I would love to listen to and read stories, particularly those that had a happy ending. But even more than that, I like to make up stories. There was one particular story that I played over and over again in my mind. It concerned football. I'd go out into our back garden and I would kick a football around and I would imagine that I was playing for a certain football team, Manchester City, and that they became one of the best teams in Europe. For those of you who know anything about the last 50 years, you'll know that <clears throat> shortly after I started uh, those childhood dreams, things went seriously downhill, City plunged. But you could say the last 10 years, some of my dreams have become a reality. Joking aside, what I was doing in my childish way, I was kind of escaping from the good, the bad and the indifferent of my life. Something in me, there was a longing to be part of a bigger and a better story back to the reality of what we're facing today. We are living in extremely challenging times and I believe there's a universal longing for us to experience a better story or at very least to have a different and a better perspective on life's challenges and its opportunities. And that's where I believe the Bible comes in. You see, the Bible is not uncertain or shaky. It is something that provides guidance and comfort and hope, both in the challenges and the opportunities of life. It's a little bit like this, you see. When I put these glasses on, um, I find that things that were previously blurry become clear. So um, I need my glasses for reading and for driving. When I put these glasses on, the words on the page suddenly become clear. The number plate ahead of me suddenly comes into focus. In other words, these glasses give me a sharper and a clearer focus. And in some ways, I believe that's what happens when we get into the Bible. Now, right now, you may be feeling cautious about the Bible, but you're here and I really just hope that you'll check the Bible out over this series. Secondly, you may be feeling just really keen. You love the Bible. You can't wait to dig into the truths of the Bible in a deeper way. Or thirdly, you may just be feeling overwhelmed by the prospect of the Bible. You know, it looks good, but how do you even get started? It feels like such a big and a complicated book. Well, I really hope that this series and this first session in particular will help you as we unpack the very basic subject of what is the Bible. We're going to start with a a video uh, that will unpack the headlines and then Andrew's going to come up and he's going to begin to share some of the key elements of what the Bible is. So please watch this. The Bible is the most read, loved and burned book of all time. It's still the world's bestseller, open for anyone to explore. Think of it this way. You're a rancher with a huge piece of land, but instead of fencing it off, you dig wells so all your animals gather round life-giving watering holes. The Bible is not a private book for religious people. It's a divine watering hole, open to everyone, a limitless source of guidance and hope. So how should we imagine the Bible when we open it up or turn it on? Well, firstly, it's a collection of literature. Inside the cover are dozens of books and styles, history, parables, poetry, wisdom, and some pretty bizarre visions. Think of it like a library organized into two main sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament, with so many subjects to explore. The impact of this literature on our culture is immense. Novels, art, music, sports, and politics have been inspired by the Bible. And yet the Bible doesn't reveal itself to IQ, but to those searching for answers. It's hunger and faith that counts. So the Bible is world-shaping literature. Secondly, it forms one big story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. It starts with the whole cosmos in mind. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it ends with our world restored to the way it was always supposed to be. It's not a dusty old book. This is our story. The Bible has a center of gravity. It's Jesus Christ. He's the hero, the Messiah, who fulfills Israel's calling and opens up the story to all humanity. We struggle to fix our own problems, let alone society and the environment. 
but Jesus Christ is the divine author who entered our world to turn it round. So the whole Bible points to Jesus. It's literature, it's story, and finally, it's revelation. Mysterious things happen when people engage with the Bible. Unlike other books, this one reads us when we read it. From the pages of Scripture, a living voice speaks, then calls to us. As the Bible puts it, all Scripture is inspired by God. Now, God didn't write the Bible. He inspired human authors to do that. So it's full of their personalities, history and culture. But it's ultimately a message from God. Through it, God reveals himself and communicates with us. Now, you may not be convinced, but why not try it on for size? Give the Bible a go and see what happens. At the very least, you will have read the world's bestseller. And who knows, you may discover more than you bargained for. Well, as we've just seen, the Bible is three things in one. It's a book, it's a story, and it's revelation. So we're going to unpack these three together, starting with the Bible is the world's best-selling book of all time. It's obvious that it's a book, whether you have a hard copy or you use a digital version. The Bible, the word Bible, actually comes from a Greek word, biblia, just meaning books. The word scripture just means writings. These are actually not religious terms. Strip back the jargon. The word Bible is just referring to the fact that this is a book. But by anyone's calculations, it's the world's best-selling book of all time that you're holding when you pick up a copy of the Bible. You may be familiar with Hunger Games. It's sold around 50 million copies. You may be familiar with Lord of the Rings, uh, the trilogy. It's sold around 150 million copies. The Bible, according to the Guinness Book of Records, about five billion copies have been sold or distributed uh, that we know of. That is an extraordinary figure that suggests this really is the world's best-selling book. Now, when you open it up, you realize that actually it's not one book. It's many books written by around 40 different authors that forms an ancient library. It was all finished and written by, at the, at the latest, 2,000 years ago. So sometimes when we read it, we find that Bits of it seem a bit strange, not very familiar to us, coming from another cultural context. My wife Charlotte and I, we like to read the Bible with our kids, warts and all, and that makes for some quite amusing conversations uh, with our children. Um, and they ask questions, you know, uh, why don't we sacrifice any animals? And how many concubines do you have? And, <laughs> and uh, why, how come Jesus gets away with spitting in people's eyes? Et cetera, et cetera. The point being, Actually, reading the Bible raises some interesting questions. But what we found as parents, what I found over the years of being a pastor, is that actually the Bible is an amazing book because it has the ability to spark the imagination of children and adults. People who are intellectuals and people who are more practical. People who love reading and people who struggle with it. The Bible is open to anyone who wants to discover its ancient wisdom and truth. I think of a friend, Danny, who I first met because he came down to where we were living in the UK, running away from London. He'd been involved in gang culture and in crime and in cocaine use, and he was getting away from the madness. And uh, to cut a long story short, he turned up at the church that I was leading, and he was so frightened, thinking that he, he said afterwards, he said, I thought I would burst into flames if I came in. <laughs> so he didn't come in, he went home, but instead he started reading a Bible. And when I eventually met up with Danny, I faced an avalanche of questions. It's like this book. I mean, Danny had never read a book in his life up to this point, never finished one. But suddenly the Bible had got on the inside. It had made sense of some of the craziness and going on in his own soul and brought healing and power, new power to his life. And I have to say, I think I learned more from Danny than he learned from me as he explored this incredible book, even though he wasn't a reader at all. I lost touch with Danny and I phoned him not that long ago and asked how he was getting on and along with other updates he said that he'd just finished reading the New Testament again, which is not bad for a kid that dropped out of school aged 14. Look, you don't need to have a high IQ or be a great reader. If you want wisdom, if you want truth and guidance, this is the world's bestseller for a good reason and you might be surprised if you dip into it what you find. You might be surprised how relevant it still is to our lives and how beautiful some of its writings are. I was speaking at a wedding a few years back and afterwards, dur during the service, someone had read from that famous passage in the Bible. It often gets read at weddings, even royal weddings, 1 Corinthians 13, 
Uh, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, etc. And afterwards, this guy came up to me, he's obviously not, not normally someone who'd go to church, and he said, uh, he said to me, where'd you get that poem from? It was bloody beautiful, he said. And uh, it made me realise, gosh, sometimes I think we forget just how beautiful the Bible is. You don't need to believe in it to recognise this is the world's best-selling book. It contains surprising wisdom and beauty. And through this Bible series, we're going to experience it for ourselves. So it's a best-selling book. Secondly, though, it's our human story. The Bible is a best-selling book, and it's our human story. One of the least recognised things about the Bible is that it makes up one large story with a beginning, a middle, and an end that all holds together. It's not just a random collection of religious sayings or a moral code. How boring would that be? It's much more compelling than that. It's a beautiful, large story that you can explore through this series. Now, this is amazing because, as I said earlier, around 40 different authors contributed to this uh, to the Bible, over a period of well over a thousand years that they were writing. How incredible that you can bring all of that together and it kind of makes sense and has coherence and harmony. I mean, it makes you wonder whether someone else was behind the whole thing, orchestrating and coordinating it to bring it all together. The Bible then is one large story, but not just any old story. This is our human story. It opens with that famous opening line, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That sounds like the opening line of a story, and it sounds like it's relevant to every human being on planet earth. The Bible claims to tell the true human story, where we've come from, why we're here, and where we're going. So through this series, we're not so much looking at, if you like, Christian questions or religious questions, we're looking at human questions, because that's what the Bible is relevant to. This book, if you give it a chance, I believe it can really help make sense of who we are as human beings and what it means to flourish on planet Earth, even in challenging times. You know, linked to this series, I've written a book uh, which helps unpack the storyline of the Bible. And I've given it the strap line, a story, the Bible, a story that makes sense of life. Because... Over years of helping ordinary people get into the Bible for themselves, I've realized this. Here's a little strap line for you. When we make sense of the Bible, the Bible makes sense of us. That's what I've discovered. I think I'm reading it, and actually it's reading me. I think I'm making sense of it, and then I realize it's making sense of me. It's, it's giving me understanding and clarity and confidence that otherwise I lack. And so as we go through this series, this isn't a series about some dusty old book from antiquity. This is our story. We're going to discover meaning and purpose through the Bible. Over the next six sessions then, we're going to dive in at the beginning and we're going to have a, a sort of 30,000 feet view of the Bible story. And we're going to see how every one of the six parts of the Bible connects with our deep human needs and desires. Now we'll go into the details starting next session, but let me give you a little bit of a route map. Let me talk you through where we're going in this Bible series. Next session, we're going to look at origins and meaning. The Bible begins at the dawn of time and makes sense of our human desire for meaning because it answers questions like, where have we come from in the book of Genesis? And why are we here? Origins and meaning. Then in the next session, Exodus and freedom. You know, the story of the Old Testament focuses in on one nation, Israel, will follow their journey a bit, and they end up enslaved in Egypt under Pharaoh. Now, today we may not be physically imprisoned, but we can still feel trapped in negative cycles of anxiety and fear and loneliness and guilt and stress and debt, and these things can leave us feeling en enslaved. Well, the Bible is a story of freedom. We're going to see from Israel escaping from slavery in Egypt through the Exodus story. We're going to see how we can find true freedom. Then exile and peace. The story moves on to a dark period for Israel. They get taken captive from their homeland. Life falls apart for them. They lose all that's familiar and safe. And they make this terrifying journey to Babylon where they are enslaved for 70 years. It's called the exile. And it helps us grapple with those questions. 
Why does God allow suffering? And where is God when life falls apart? And how can I find peace in the storms? The Bible's so relevant to these issues. Then the Messiah comes, Jesus Christ. We're going to discover as we look at the centre of the Bible, Jesus, how we can discover the source of true love that every human heart needs. Jesus Christ shows us what God's love looks like for you and me. Then, in part five of the big story, we'll look at spirit and community. The Holy Spirit comes and fills human beings in a new way. And this is where we fit into the story. This is now our chapter and the Spirit wants to join us into the community of God's people where we find belonging, we no longer need to feel alone or isolated, and we find purpose. We're no longer lost and confused. The Spirit helps us understand what life is really all about. And finally, in the last session, we'll look at hope. Where is this human story of ours headed? What is our ultimate home? Well, the Bible concludes with these beautiful scenes of a world restored, resurrected human beings, an ultimate hope to look forward to, and it can give us confidence in the storms of life. You know, that's why we need this big story of the Bible. We need to experience a better story because we can feel fragile and vulnerable in life. There's so many uncertainties we're facing right now. But this series invites us through Jesus Christ, put your trust in him and we join our little fragile selves to this great big story that's certain and secure and we find a new confidence and peace to live by. The Bible is our human story. It's not just a religious dusty old book for vicars and nuns, it's for everyone to experience and enjoy. I listened to an episode of Desert Island Discs a while ago and the English comedian Lee Mack was on the show and when he was told that you get the Bible and Shakespeare as standard on this imaginary desert island, he interestingly he replied, well I would take the Bible, Lee Mack said, because uh, if aliens landed on planet Earth and said, so what's this whole human story about? I'd say, well, there's this book that purports to give the answers. And then he went on to say, the funny thing is he said, I haven't actually read it, which is crazy, isn't it? You know, actually, I think Lee Mack, that comedian, has a better understanding of the Bible than most religious people. It's not just a collection of moral sayings. It's not a boring, dusty old book. It's the true story of us human beings on planet Earth, and it makes sense of life, and it therefore makes sense for us to give it some time through this Bible series. So the Bible's a best-selling book. The Bible is our human story that makes sense of life. And thirdly, the Bible is a divine message. In a moment, Dave's going to unpack this one for us. But before that, we're going to see some ordinary people sharing their journey of engaging with the Bible and experiencing it as a better story. What I love about the Bible is it's all about who God is his culture, his values, his character, his nature, just tells us what he loves, what he doesn't love. And for me, I love that it's not a book about a formula or a system, it's all about relationship with him. I love that. I wouldn't call myself a big reader. I don't read novels, but I love reading the Bible. You can take bite-sized pieces out of it. I really enjoy that it um, encourages you, it strengthens you, it challenges you. I have found the Bible relatable, living, alive, and mostly speaking directly to me. What I love about the Bible is how down to earth and how real much of this or many of the stories that we hear are how Jesus is eating fish with his friends, he's drinking wine, he's hanging out and I, I particularly like the Psalms where we have these stories, this, this complete range of emotions from the highest highs, jubilations to the, the lowest lows of anguish and an anger and frustration and that makes the Bible relatable. I think the Bible brings life because it, it isn't just a book, it's actually God's book. 
And so when we read it, it's not just words on the page, it's God's words to us. It's his peace, it's his wisdom, it's his love, which we receive right in the middle of everything we're going through. In those moments where God maybe feels a bit distant or far away, it's so good just to have the Bible there next to me as a physical resource to turn to and read his word. The Bible is really relevant today. You know, I, I was broken, I was lost, I was confused. And uh, I actually picked up the Bible for the very first time and I read the Bible and the very first thing that I read was for I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future I didn't grow up in a family where I had a father figure but through the Bible I can get to know God as my father and I get to know who I am as his child as well so I love the Bible one thing I love about the Bible is that no matter how many times you read it it always reveals something new to you so for example you might read something one day but then the next day it reveals something completely different or even like adds to your picture and I think it's amazing because then you can just keep reading it, it never, you never get bored. So some great personal reflections from a whole bunch of different people all essentially saying the same thing. As we looked at earlier, yes the Bible is a best-selling book, yes it is our human story but is it also a divine message? Now this is a more controversial point but what we're really saying in this is that God actually can speak to us through the Bible because ultimately he's the divine author behind it. That doesn't mean that God actually wrote the Bible as we saw earlier on. Different human authors from different backgrounds and cultures and personality over a period of several centuries actually wrote the Bible. What we're saying is that behind the human authors was a divine author. One verse in the New Testament, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 encapsulates that. 2 Timothy 3 16 uh, begins like this. All scripture is inspired by God. Or we could say, and it literally is translated, all scripture is God breathed. In other words, God spoke to the human authors. He inspired their writings and their words so that when we read the Bible, it's not just an ancient dusty book, it's a means by which God can communicate to us today, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Now, I've been reading the Bible now for over 35 years, and there's been countless times when I've sensed God speaking to me. One occasion comes to mind. About three and a half years ago, my youngest brother suddenly and tragically died. Not only was I in shock and grief, but I was very concerned, particularly for my mum and dad and the rest of my family. And I'd been studying uh, particular portions of the Bible that talked about the names of God, which um, represents his character, his nature. And one of the names of God is the Lord is my shepherd. We find it in the much loved Psalm 23. So I'd been studying the Bible. I went out for a walk and I ended up in a field. And as I looked out in the field, this field was filled with sheep. And as I was looking at the sheep, I sensed the voice of God, God speaking to me, Dave, I am the Lord, your shepherd. I already knew it up here, but it was like it came fresh to me. And it was something about the Lord expressing his care and his comfort and his love for me that immediately brought a sense of comfort in the midst of that grieving process. Fast forward to just 10 days ago. Um, I'd woken in the middle of the night um, and I was battling to get back to sleep. You know, something about the pressures of the season that I'm sure many of us can identify with. And so I, I went downstairs, was trying to kind of, you know, get my mind kind of just at rest so I could go back to sleep. And I was reminded of this particular incident. And so I decided I'm going to turn again to Psalm 23. And I, I picked up a modern translation of Psalm 23, uh, the Passion Translation, and I started reading quietly these words to myself. And as I started reading the verses, it was like within the verses, I started hearing the voice of God beginning to wash over me, bringing me peace and a sense of freedom from anxiety and fear. And so shortly after that, I was able to go back to bed, uh, go to sleep, slept like a baby. But more than that, just one, one incident. Over the last 10 days, Several times I've gone back to that same psalm that I know so well and have allowed the, the, the voice of God to speak to me. And so what I'd like to do 
is I want to just read short extracts from Psalm 23 from the Passion Translation. And it may be you're here today and you don't even know the Lord, but my prayer is that as you listen, you might want to open your heart and just allow him to speak to you. Maybe you've been on the journey of faith for years, and, but right now you are finding this situation or circumstance in your life incredibly tough. I pray that if you like, the, the words of the Bible, the words of Scripture will wash over you as you hear God speak. So let me read this to you. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. And I love this. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Isn't that wonderful? Now I'd like to just pray and wherever you're at, you might just like to open your heart. And again, especially if you've never um, <clears throat> encountered the Lord personally, this may be your moment. Maybe you've drifted away from the Lord. Maybe you're somebody who've known the Lord for, for, for years, but you need fresh renewing and you need to hear God speak to you afresh and come close to you. So let me pray. Father, I want to thank you that you are a good God, that you are our Father, and you've revealed yourself as, as like a shepherd who loves and cares for us and wants the best for us. So I pray for every single person watching that right now, by your Holy Spirit, you will, as it were, fill our homes and our hearts with the sense of the nearness of your presence. And right now, you may just like to sort of echo a prayer in your own heart, something like, Lord, I open my life to you. Come to me, speak to me, fill me with your love and your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful. Now, uh, before we finish, just a few things I want to say, three kind of next steps I want to encourage you. Firstly, I trust you're going to continue on this journey with us over the next six weeks. We've got six weeks um, ahead of us. And not just a great series, I believe, for us, but why not think about people in your world, family, friends, neighbours, work colleagues, invite them to join us as we begin to look at this big story of the Bible starting next week. Secondly, can I encourage you to get into a small group, or if you're in a small group, to come expectant as you gather this week. I remember many years ago, um, I was a very new Christian, just been um, a Christian for about three, four months, and I was up at university, and I was in a very small Bible study. There was about four of us in that little, little room. And we started reading one of the New Testament letters called the Book of Romans. And I can't explain why or how, but just suddenly I had a moment where the truth of God's love and God's forgiveness and God's righteousness and how I had a right standing with him. It was like the, that truth just dawned on me, like the scales fell off my eyes and it changed my life. But the interesting thing was, it was in the context of studying the Bible with other people. So I just want to encourage you, um, get in a group, come expectant, ready for God to meet you as you gather together around the Bible. And then thirdly, can I encourage you, if you're not already doing so, to engage with the Bible on a personal front. You know, if you don't own a Bible, you know, why not just get a, a modern translation of the Bible? Or, you know, if you don't want to go for a paper version, there's a great um, online version called the YouVersion Bible. You can download the app. It's got tons of resources, you know, including great uh, daily Bible reading plans like the Bible in One Year by Nikki and Pippa Gumbel. Um, so, you know, just get into the Bible and allow God to speak to you this week. And finally, for those of you who want to go just deeper in the Bible, particularly during this series, um, as, as we heard early on, Andrew Ollerton has written this great book um, that kind of underpins uh, the series as a whole. And in it, as well as the chapters, there's daily readings that you might want to track with during 
this season. Well, um, <clears throat> hope this has been helpful. Looking forward to a great ne next few weeks together as we allow the Lord to help us experience a better story. New perspective, new hope to guide us on the journey. God bless you.